So as I said, the, uh, the DNA forms a double helix. So um, this is a better picture of the double helix, and there are several features that are important here. Okay, so there's the base pairs uh, between uh, the nitrogenous bases on the complementary strands, so between the template and the complementary strands. And then the way this arranges itself for the most common form of DNA, which is known as BDNA, okay, uh, the structure looks like this. And so there are two major features which are really important. Um, which are called the major groove, which is shown here. Oh, let's try something darker so you can see it. Blue? Not quite. How about red? Seems better. Okay. And then the minor groove. Okay. Now these are important binding sites. Uh, for different proteins, including DNA polymerase or uh, RNA polymerase uh, that are important for uh, replication or transcription, respectively. And so the, uh, the bases orient themselves in, in a very particular way within the major groove and the minor groove, which allows for uh, different uh, hydrogen bond donors and acceptors to be available uh, for these enzymes uh, to to attach to the DNA, okay? So this helps in recognition of places to start either transcription or translation, or excuse me, replication or transcription, not translation, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, there are more than one form of DNA. So two that we're gonna look at are ADNA and BDNA. So this is BDNA uh, on the right-hand side, and so I just showed you this uh, in the last slide. And then on the left hand side is called ADNA. So the difference in the different um, ADNA tends to happen uh, when there's less moisture around, okay, in conditions with less water. And so the uh, conformation of the DNA will change. And so this changes several uh, components. So this is a table from your book, uh, table 24.1, uh, uh, which shows one that the tilt uh, in the uh, the tilt of the plane, if you think of the two complementary nucleotides acting as a plane, so if we have a T that's forming two hydrogen bonds with an A, right? Uh, for the B DNA, this will have, and this is very exaggerated, but for the B DNA, it'll have a tilt that could be described as this. And then in the ADNA, it's going to be much more pronounced, okay? So this is uh, shown in the column, or excuse me, in the row that's, where is it? It's base tilt normal to the helix axis. So for ADNA, this is 20 degrees uh, versus it's only 6 degrees for BDNA. Uh, another uh, important difference is that the size, the relative sizes of the major and the minor grooves change. Uh, between ADNA and BDNA. And this is thought to help uh, in function, particularly uh, for polymerases, uh, where small chunks of the uh, DNA, which are currently undergoing uh, complementation by DNA polymerase, uh, go convert from the BDNA form to the ADNA form. Now, one of the more striking things uh, that happens uh, is if you look through the top of the double helix. So this is these are two pictures looking through uh, as if you're looking um, at a strand of double-stranded DNA and looking through the top of it. Okay, so BDNA, shown here on the right, uh, you see that the hydrogen bonds are more or less down the axis of the barrel of the double-stranded DNA, whereas ADNA, they're not. They sort of go around uh, you can imagine so, sort of an imaginary rod that goes here. And you, one description that I saw that I think is pretty good is you can think of ADNA as uh, taking the double-stranded DNA and wrapping it around um, a metal rod or something like that. So ADNA looks more like that, whereas BDNA, the hydrogen bonds cross the axis, um, the middle axis down the, um, down the BDNA. 
And so what actually causes this is that what the different major structural differences is, is very minor, uh, seems very minor, but is really important uh, for this different conformational change. So remember that the sugar ring, okay, so the uh, deoxyribose ring can pucker, right? And so remember we talked about C2 prime and C3 prime endo and exo. So for ADNA, the ribose rings are all in, or a majority are in the C3 primed endo form. Whereas for BDNA, they're mostly in the C2 primed endo form. And so that is this little minor difference in the structure of the component nucleotides that causes these huge changes in the macromolecular structure of DNA and changes these large, uh, and causes these large changes uh, between the DNA. And so this also goes for RNA. So remember, RNA has to form a hybrid with DNA during transcription. So the RNA, for instance, we have DNA, and we have our strand here, and we're forming a, we're doing undergoing transcription here now. This is using the DNA as a template, and then you get an mRNA strand, right? Okay, but first it has to use this as a template. So at some point, uh, there's a DNA-RNA hybrid that's being made en route to making the messenger RNA, which then eventually goes on to, protein, uh, to form protein, right, to help give the instructions to form protein. So this is a crystal structure showing uh, DNA-RNA um, hybrid, all right? So what does this look like to you? If you look at just this small section of it, uh, does this look more like A-type or B-type uh, DNA uh, based on the uh, structures from the last couple of slides?